What's up everyone? So it's my sixth month as a PhD student in Biomedical Sciences and in this video I'll tell you all about my experiences so far. Coming up! So yeah, that's me practicing kicks, but what does that have to do with it? Well, since we're discussing the experience as a PhD student, I think it's important to discuss the balance to find between the research and your personal life. So that's also one of the reasons why it took me a while to upload another video, because I was busy preparing for my second degree black belt. And guess what? I passed. Another thing that's putting a little extra stress on my life right now is that I'm in the middle of preparing to move. So last summer me and my girlfriend actually bought a house which is further away from work than I am now and I'm preparing everything, I'm getting shit together to be able to move at the end of July this summer. And then of course this channel that I'm doing it's also time consuming so because of the other two things I didn't have that much time to do stuff for this channel. So it's not because I didn't make any video for the last two months that I didn't think about the channel also. So if you already watched some earlier videos or you're going to check them out later, then you'll probably notice that the tune attached to the intro has changed. Because I wanted to get rid of that typical dubstep thing, you know, right? Because... Yeah, it's too generic. And besides that, I do have a lot of ideas for this channel and I hope I will find time to work them out, all of them. So another thing that I've noticed, guys, is that there's a lot of wind today outside and I can see the clouds just passing by. So there's periods of very sunniness and then there's periods of being grey. So that will do something about the lighting in this video. Once I moved, that will change because I then will get a more permanent studio setup I hope you will see in the future. Once that I've moved out and moved back in, in my new house and everything is settled a bit, that's actually good for this channel because I will have a room for myself where I can actually build a sort of studio with a consistent background. Because yeah, let's be honest guys, consistency in terms of the videos is not my strongest point so far. But that's because I'm trying different formats and trying to see what the feedback of you guys is for it. And also let's not forget that some videos or some topics would require a different format for explanation. Like for instance this vlog, it's obvious that I should talk directly to the camera, right? So you can get to see me because it's sharing my experiences. And that way you can see that I'm still not depressed or anything. That I'm still happy as a PhD student so far still eager to build this channel because I actually received an email from one of you guys asking for help with a resume with a job application so that's really motivating because I'm actually doing something good and you guys reach out to me to ask for advice so that will keep me going also don't forget these vlogs are also a way for me to reflect on my period as a PhD student myself so that's why I'm doing it also and despite not having produced any video in the last two months I did promote my channel by going on social accounts. I actually made a Reddit account, which is new to me. And I'm highly interested in all biomedical topics, so I tend to watch a lot of YouTube videos relevant to the biomedical field and try to get answers and try to provide answers to questions that people have in the comment section. So I try to be very active in the biomedical science, biomedical research, PhD, PhD student, research community on YouTube. That's a bit about my personal life and how I combine this with what I'm doing in a PhD, what my research is doing, because these things are actually distracting me from my research. Nonetheless, I'm still doing research, of course, I'm getting paid for it. So the things I've been doing in these last six months concerning research, being a PhD student. Well, for one thing, I did do a lot of conferences already. I think at the beginning of December I only worked for like five days and I already had to join a congress which was the Belgian Association for Study of the Liver and that was the winter meeting on December 7th or 8th or anything. And then I went to the Belgian week of gastroenterology which was in February somewhere. Then despite not being in oncology I also went to an oncology symposium with a colleague of mine where I also had a lot of great ideas. Then there was the student research day by my university and then somewhere in mid-April we actually went with the whole lab to a congress in Vienna 
which was very cool by the way, the biggest congress you can think of in Europe for studies of the liver, which is the EASL, European Association for the Studies of the Liver, and it's called the International Liver Congress. So that was very cool. The good thing about conferences is that you get to stay up to date with the latest developments in your research field. You can network more, you can get new ideas. And let's be honest, if it's a congress abroad, then actually you can mix a little bit business with pleasure. So traveling might be a benefit of going to congresses. And speaking of traveling... As I said guys, it's all about finding a balance between work and private. If you'd like to check a full report of the city trip that I made with friends in Lisbon, then I'll put a link in the description below. So another thing that I did that occupies a lot of time. So another thing that I'm doing is doing an extensive literature search and reading a lot on that because I have to make a review of the literature on my topic by let's say the end of September. So that's definitely something that will occupy my time in the coming summer. And so far I've been reading a lot and summarizing a bit so it's time to get moving and get to the actual writing and this will make a good synopsis, a good summary of the current status in my field and actually we're going a bit broader. I don't think I ever disclosed what my field actually is so I will do a video on that as well. So briefly I'm working on primary sclerosing cholangitis and related ulcerative colitis. So it's basically a liver disease with concomitant bowel disease, which is phenotypically very interesting in these patients because 80% of the PSC patients have this concomitant bowel disease in the colon. Now that's interesting from a point of view in terms of the gut liver axis. You might have heard about the gut brain axis, the gut joint axis, anything mostly linked with microbiome. There's a lot of microbiome research also in my field but I'm focused more on the innate immunity, so immune cells. I'll do a separate video on that guys to explain more my research and it would be good to get my research out there as well even though I don't have any yeah, good, good results, let's say I don't have any publishable results yet. Which actually brings me to, yeah, number three that I've been doing during this PhD so far in these six months is getting setups done. So experimentally, actually I've been doing some experience in the lab on a fax machine, so fluorescence activated cell sorting and mainly testing panels to get cells isolated out of uh, human primary tissue, being blood, whole blood, and we'll also test on colon samples. And the other part is from mice, laboratory animals of course, where we, uh, where we take the livers and the colons and then isolate cells from there. Furthermore, of course, I have to read up and follow people along in the lab to get the techniques right, maybe aid them a bit to get some practical uh, work it done to get to get acquainted with the practical work needed to get it in my fingers a bit But I must say for like applications where you have to pipe it a lot or do serial dilutions or anything It helps that I have five years of experience in biotech already in mostly in cell culture and assays on 96 well format because that tends to Be easier for me because I already have those handlings a bit. I'm trained in that and then another thing is looking for collaborations because yeah, I had meetings with my professor going to other universities or professors with their teams coming from other universities to us. 
to search for common ground or actually topics where we can collaborate together. For instance, someone has more expertise in vitro, we have more expertise in vivo. So how to combine that in the context of a similar topic, more or less. And then the final thing is a lot of administration that's going on and still have to get acquainted with like software programs, how things work, uh, good laboratory practices, uh, get acquainted with the new environment because you actually have a new laboratory animal facility and it's very strict in terms of hygiene with air cleansing and you have to take off all your clothes so it's very labor intensive but it's best practice to have a very sterile environment it's not completely sterile but very sterile towards the animals so that you do not bring any pathogens uh, that could interfere with your science with your experiments so that's actually very good although it's labor intensive but yeah it has to happen so one more thing about this administration part so also ethical committees so when you do laboratory animal experiments you have to get approval from ethical committees uh, also when you do human samples of course and there's a part where we will do human samples and actually that's a lot more administration and difficult to obtain because one I'm working on a fairly rare disease and getting human samples from a clinic either fresh or isolated requires yeah database management requires making good appointments with the doctors the surgeons in the clinic so we're setting that up as well so definitely there's going to be a human sample part involved in my research which is actually good because that's the most relevant setting that we can get of course so in general in these six months I already had a lot of fun at work, I learned a lot, I grew already, I'm getting more acquainted with everything. I did get a little hindered by things going on in my personal life, having other goals like the moving that's coming up, getting my second degree black belt, I also, wor I also work out a lot so that consumes a lot of time so it's all about finding a balance and so far I think the balance is still there but I must say I think it's calm before the storm so everyone to summarize this a bit am I super stressed out at work not yet am I depressed no do I like going to work yes do I like doing research yes will I get more stress in the future most likely do I have fun at work yes do I like my colleagues yes do I miss my former colleagues also Am I still looking forward to the rest of my PhD? Hell yes. So I'll keep you guys updated. I'll try to make more videos in the meanwhile. And if you want to watch some more of my videos, here's a video why I started a PhD in the first place. And if you want some advice from my former senior scientists at the biotech company, I recommend watching this video. If you don't want to miss out on anything, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified for any new content. See you for the next one guys. Cheers.